Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecture on Introducing Quantification. Quantification is everywhere, and, and it essentially describes the way that we relate different kinds of things or different sets of things by proportions or quantities or so forth. And we'll see that in a formal sense we can get a very precise notion of what quantification means most of the time, but not all of the time. Now when we say quantifying or quantifier or quantification, most people think of certain determiners that express different proportions. So for instance, all. If I say all the boys showed up, I'm not just saying that the boys showed up, but I'm using all to express that the totality of the boys showed up. Whereas if I said some of the boys showed up, then I'm specifically saying that it wasn't a totality, but that uh, there were some of the members, you know, there was a non-empty set of the members that showed up, and so forth. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have all, many, most, more, some, few, none. These are what people think of oftentimes as quantifying expressions, and they are. But quantification is everywhere. And uh, we find it not only on these determiners, but also in adverbs, like always, sometimes, everywhere, uh, in three places. And we see it in numerals, and we see it in uh, uh, all sorts of uh, other expressions as well. And if even looking beyond the classic clear quantifiers, the notion of quantification formally is employed in even more areas of the semantics. So something like a modal. When we say John has to leave, then uh, that obligation is captured using uh, a kind of every. So in every uh, instance that's relevant, you know, in every possible outcome of the world as it is, John is going to leave you know, in each of those outcomes. And um, in that case, you know, right, every possible outcome, that's a quantified, it's a quantified expression. Or, uh, you know, if we think about uh, conditional clauses uh, and all sorts of other expressions, that uh, we, we essentially employ quantification in many different aspects of the semantics. And so, uh, understanding how quantification works will be absolutely essential uh, from here going on forward. But right now we're going to introduce quantification using these uh, determiners because they relate to the types of semantic objects that we've seen so far. So, uh, you know, the, the use of quantifiers is important and the ways that quantifiers are distinct from the kinds of determiners that we've seen so far is important. So stepping even a little beyond determiners to determiner phrases. We've seen different types of determiner phrases so far. We've seen names, like uh, Ellen. We've seen definite descriptions, like the dog. And we've seen personal pronouns, like uh, her or it. Now, these were distinct in a lot of ways. But one of the ways where they were identical is that they all have the same semantic type. They all refer to individuals of type E. But if you look at certain determiner phrases, namely the ones with quantifiers, we see that they don't behave the same way. So if I say every dog barks at cats, we're not really referring to these different dogs. If I say no dog likes cats, well, I'm not referring to anything, right? There's no item that I'm even picking out. If I say I'm looking for a unicorn, uh, that, that could be true, even if there's no such thing as unicorn. But, uh, and so if there's no unicorn, I can't be referring to any specific one. So quantifiers allow us to do this, and what we want to know is why. Now, quantifiers differ from uh, referential expressions in a lot of different ways. One is that they don't refer, as we've seen, and another is that they don't lead to contradictions in the same way. So to take an example from Heinrich Kratzer, if we say that Mount Rainier is on the west side of the border and Mount Rainier is on the east side of the border, 
Well, these cannot both be true, and if one is true, the other must be false, as long as Mount Rainier exists. And, uh, but if we change Mount Rainier for two mountains, a quantified expression, well, two mountains are on the west side of the border is true. Two mountains on the west side, on the east side of the border, can also be true. So they're, they're not necessarily contradictory. And, uh, in fact, they can both be false as well. So we get a distinct pattern in that sense. Uh, and if we say, um, you know, every, we, do we get the same result? Yeah, we get similar results. Um, but in that case, you know, we have to be careful. Right? So if we say every mountain is on the east side of the border, that cannot be true at the same time as every mountain is on the west side of the border. But it can be true that neither of those holds at the same time. So if some borders are some mountains are on the west side and some mountains on the are on the east side, then um, we can end up with a case where neither of those is true, so they're not contradictory. Now Another distinction is that quantifiers don't allow syllogisms without composition. And this is something we'll talk about a little bit later. They have a property that's called scope. Uh, they're interpreted relative to one another because, essentially, you know, just jumping ahead, the uh, syntactic sisters to a quantified DP are, can be thought of as the domain of its interpretation. And so when one is in the domain of the other, it gets interpreted with respect to it. Now, um, another, now we can keep going on. Another way they differ is that they affect entailments in particular ways. Uh, we saw that when we were looking at entailments, that a lot of the expressions that we were looking at involved quantifiers. Um, so if we say, you know, Thomas came yesterday morning, that entails that Thomas came yesterday, because yesterday morning uh, upwardly entails yesterday, if we have a referential subject. But if we change that to at most one student, a quantified expression, then we don't get the same entailment. So if I say at most one student came yesterday morning, that does not entail that at most one student came yesterday. And in fact, we would get a downward entailment. If I said, at most, one student came yesterday, that would entail that at most one student came yesterday morning, because there couldn't have been two. So uh, we get different kinds of relationships between quantified expressions and uh, referential expressions, that we want to keep these distinct. And we'll want to see, of course, how those how those distinct meanings interact with the different uh, compositional mechanisms that we have. But for now, just get a sense of uh, you know, that's what a quantifier is, and, um, you know, and we see them all over the place, and we'll see them continuously throughout the rest of the course, and we'll see them in places where we might not have imagined them before.